shit. Not without incident. Watching your favourite movie stars flex their skills never gets old, which is why one list will never be enough to do them any justice. I'll fight with number B. So today the TV region's doubling down on its efforts with Volume 2 of the top 25 most badass movie scenes. <laughs> Bob Odenkirk might have walked into our hearts as a shady lawyer, but he made sure not to turn into one of those typecast actors. 2021's Nobody was the perfect film for him to choose because the character he plays is completely different from Saul Goodman. For starters, just look at the bus fight scene. It's a realistic portrayal of how such a situation would go down in real life because both sides are shown to be flawed and vulnerable. The goons weren't just brainless fools attacking their target blindly. They had genuine fear when they realized how skilled their opponent was. At the same time, Hutch might be a bad but he ain't Superman and you can see it in the damage he takes throughout the scene. However, the tables turned quickly enough and what we got to see was truly brutal. Bro literally went from better call Saul to better call an ambulance. What are they still doing here, old man? I'm gonna f*** you up. <laughs> I just want to know what to sell when you're dead. sure do have a thing for extended fight scenes, and this one's no different. The Man From Nowhere was a nice little film on a man revisiting his past to try and secure his future, but as expected, it gets super messy. And speaking about messy, the most brutal scene from the film involves a lot of shooting, stabbing, and an endless supply of blood. Our hero doesn't hold back for a single second, whether it's the epic line he uses to start the showdown, or the way he ends it with that final stab to the chest. Of course, there was a lot of shooting and killing in the middle, and that's what makes this sequence stand out. Bro refused to accept failure even when he lost his gun, so he switched to a knife. To be honest with you, the black suit he's wearing here kind of makes him look like death itself. If this scene is anything to go by, it's a very realistic assumption too. Robert Eggers is one of the few modern directors who actually puts in an effort for his films. I can see glimpses of Stanley Kubrick and at times even David Lynch, especially if you look at movies like The Witch or The Lighthouse. The Northman though was a completely brutal and unapologetic film spearheaded by Alexander Skarsgård who plays Amleth. It's by no means a traditional film because it makes you question whether anyone is even worth rooting for. The perfect example of this can be found in The Village Raid. There's no mercy on display whatsoever and Amleth taps into his carnivorous instincts by even ripping off flesh from his victims. Chill bro, you won the battle, there's no need to go overboard now is there? However, it's the blatant over the top nature of this encounter that leaves a long lasting impression on its audience. The moment when he catches the spear and throws it back has got to be one of my favourite moments from 2022. <laughs>
John Wick franchise has a lot of brave characters, but Jimmy has got to be the smartest guy in the whole series. Bro didn't choose violence and simply turned a mass assassination into a noise complaint after realizing his buddy John was, um, sorting some things out. See, it's moments like these that you give context on how badass Keanu Reeves really is. Also, if you're wondering, the director explained this scene after the movie came out. Basically, some of the police knew about the whole secret assassin underworld, even if they weren't directly a part of it. Now, if you pay close attention to the movies, you'll notice that John and his opponents only attack each other and they never hurt any civilians. As long as they stay contained and only kill people who are part of the underworld, the police just don't interfere. Which is probably why the cops never show up to try to arrest John, even when he's openly murdering dozens of people in the streets. Yeah, it ain't lazy writing. Evening, John. Evening, Jimmy. Noise complaint. Noise complaint. Tom Cruise was way ahead in the art of doing his own stunts, even way back in 2011. If we hadn't already seen enough of his savagery in the previous Mission Impossible films, Ghost Protocol just upped the ante by showing Ethan Hunt climbing the Burj Khalifa. Once again, let me stress the fact that it is indeed Tom Cruise who's risking his life just to make sure the director gets a nice shot. Now this level of commitment is unrivaled, and it's exactly why his films always come across as sincere and genuine. You can tell this sequence was directed with a lot of care, because you've got one of Hollywood's finest legends climbing the tallest building in the world. I'll admit that I had to deal with a lot of anxiety during this scene because I kept thinking about what was going on in Tom's head while he was doing this. A simpleton like myself would have probably just fainted within the first few seconds, you know. Jason Statham has proven time and time again that he's a trustworthy action star and his role in Wild Card is of the many testaments to that claim. But like how on earth can you possibly hope to match up to a guy who can finish off an entire gang with nothing more than a couple of cutlery pieces? The fight was so savage that now I get flashbacks whenever I'm using a knife on a fork. I particularly love the scene where Nick calmly takes a couple of punches to the face and looks back at his attackers like, is that all you got? Also, I want to take a moment to show my appreciation to the guy who randomly started singing in the dinner. It allowed Nick to take the fight outside and spare the civilians of an unnecessary mess. <laughs> I guess you could call him the uh, unsung hero of the whole scene, eh? establish himself not just as a legendary actor, but an equally respectable director as well. In the case of 1985's Pale Rider, the man performed both roles and established himself as a jack of all trades. Looking more closely at his character, the preacher, it becomes evident that the film's theme centered around the four horsemen of the apocalypse. He represents death, which also explains the title of the film, because he's kind of like a ghost rider, but without the flaming skull. The shootout scene at the bar was an excellent way to showcase his dominance, because Bro was looking down on his enemies as if he's about to collect their souls. It's a great Great case study on how to establish dominance without having to say a single line of dialogue. Also, that little reload at the end was a nice little touch to top off the whole thing. Entirely without incident. I'm coming. We'd normally 
normally associate Christian Bale with Batman, but he was also part of a somewhat hidden gem from 2002. Equilibrium didn't exactly set the world on fire, neither did it impress many critics, but it did have a couple of noteworthy scenes. One of them was when John Preston finally set himself loose with his trusted guns. The stunts were ridiculous, but at the same time enjoyable as well. Yet yeah, I know it's hard to imagine someone as refined as Bruce Wayne doing stuff like this, but if it helps, just know that Equilibrium came out after American Psycho. As for the encounter in itself, it's the right kind of entertainment that defies all logic and physics. Bro literally threw his spare ammo at the enemy before even beginning his attack. Now, it might be cheesy, but I'm not complaining at all. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't mind seeing stuff like this more often in modern cinema. You know, a lot of people spend big bucks to be able to extend their lives. Heck, it's rumoured that people like Walt Disney are actually frozen and kept somewhere so there's a medicine to cure ageing. However, if you've seen 2015's He Never Died, you'll know that an extended life isn't all that appealing. Just look at Jack, he's basically just an annoyed dad who keeps getting interrupted by people. The true extent of his immortality is seen when he gets shot in the freaking head. Bro just casually stands up and looks at his attacker like, that won't work on me young man. Like seriously, how do you stop a guy who's got more durability than a freaking zombie? Also, can you imagine how many dad jokes he must have up his sleeve? <laughs> you can probably filter them by eras. Get away from her, you bitch! If guys can do it, then so can the ladies. If you're someone who says women weren't allowed to star or lead in action films before the woke era, then just turn your attention to Sarah Connor from the Terminator series or Ellen Ripley from the Alien franchise. Sigourney Weaver totally owned her role and gave us the best possible example of what a female badass really is. Her final encounter against the Alien Queen is an excellent portrayal of the same. She knows she's got no chance against the overpowered monster, but she still takes the risk and comes out on top. Apart from the fact that she hopped into a 1980s version of a Transformer, it's the sass with which Ripley tackles the alien queen and her determination is truly admirable. It also goes without saying that her iconic line is easily the highlight of the entire scene. To me, this was James Cameron's peak. Avatar might be minting billions, but this, this is true cinema. that Jason Bourne is basically the American James Bond. Heck, this film's release year even ends with 007. However, that doesn't mean Matt Damon didn't nail his role to the T. If there's one thing this scene does right, it's the building of suspense. I was getting so nervous while watching each and every second unfold right in front of my eyes. Luckily, the payoff is huge and the brief fight towards the end of the scene was totally badass. On top of that, the way Noah says, Jesus Christ, that's Jason Bourne, was executed perfectly. The sequence also shows how aware Bourne is of his surroundings. He knew each and every inch of the area, which was why he was able to come out on top even though he was outnumbered. If Jason Bourne tells you to stay on the line, you stay on the line. Jesus Christ. That's 
Jason Bourne. I'll fight with none but thee. For I do hate thee. We hate alike. I don't know if you're a Shakespeare fan, but you should still watch Coriolanus. It's a nice film adaptation of his play, and we get to see Gerard Butler in one of his better acted roles. Ralph Fiennes also does a tremendous job, and he even directed the film. It just goes on to show that he's not just the guy who played Voldemort. As far as the knife fight's concerned, I personally found it to be one of my favourite moments from the whole film. The dialogue here is on point. I mean, come on, I will fight none but thee, for I do hate thee. Isn't that just such an epic thing to say before lashing out at your opponent, yeah? It shows how both fighters are considerate enough to fight their personal battles alone. Also, also, the fight choreography is on point. I guess sometimes it's good to bring a knife to a gunfight. Westerns aren't as bad as people try to make them out to be. As a matter of fact, they might just be the key towards revitalizing modern cinema. Take Wind River, for example. The shootout scene that happens isn't something that's worked into the plot for the sake of convenience. It's actually a crucial part of the story and happens smoothly with the flow of the script. It's also pretty realistic in terms of how shootouts like these would normally go down. I genuinely had no idea who was going to make it out alive because that's how it is in real life as well. What really stood out for me though was seeing Elizabeth Olsen and Jeremy Renner working together in a movie that isn't the Avengers. Even so, it was pretty cool to see Hawkeye giving Wonder Maximoff some first aid treatment. John Woo sure knows how to make an action-packed sequence. Look at the hospital scene from Hard Boiled and you'll understand why I'm saying this. The sequence never gives you a moment to rest and is filled with shootout after shootout. Here's a fun fact for you. The whole scene was filmed on the same floor. Yeah, it's pretty amazing if you consider how much work had actually gone into the set design. The choreography and flow of the scene is so fluid that I feel modern directors should study it for their own movies. Oh yeah, I also like the brief moments of conflict between the two leads, especially the part where the comp gets an earful for not being able to conquer himself. It just reminds us that we're dealing with humans at the end of the day. When you think about epic fantasy battles from the 2000s era, I'm sure Lord of the Rings would come to mind. However, let's not forget another gem that came out during that period, the Chronicles of Narnia. There's just something majestic about an overpowered lion speaking in a British accent, and that's not even why I've included this scene. It's a fight to the death, as was rightly pointed out in the war cry, and I loved watching the intensity of the soldiers as they gave it their all. For a scene so grand, I was actually surprised that Peter Jackson didn't direct the film. Even with all the time that's passed, the vision 
visuals are amazing, the music's beautifully done, the nostalgia's intense, and the movie remains magical even after 18 years since its theatrical release. That's what I call timeless, isn't it? Tarantino kicked off his film career as a writer and there are quite a few movies that have his name attached to them. One such gem is True Romance from 1993. You can actually see Tarantino's DNA all over the police shootout scene because there's a ridiculous amount of bullets and an excessive amount of damage. I loved how the Mafia was a total wild card in this sequence. Even Jack was like, who the heck are these guys? Well, there surely wasn't any time to think about it because the chaos that followed was a total wipeout. Honestly speaking, I'd even put it on a par with the shootout scenes from Heat. There's intensity, emotion, and a lot of action. The only thing I found missing from this sequence though was a close-up shot of the actress's feet. But then I guess that's because Tarantino didn't direct the film. One, two, three. <laughs> All you pigs, put your guns on the floor and back money, away. Money, what are you fucking nuts? Just do what they say. Man, this is your last fucking chance. Fuck you, this is your last chance. It's amazing how well this classic holds up even today, despite being a hardcore action film. Well, it did dabble into the horror genre in the second half, but even then, there hasn't been anything like 1987's Predator since its original release. Of course, when you come across a team led by Arnold Schwarzenegger, it's obvious that you're going to see a bunch of heavy muscles. However, the jungle shootout scene was an act of sheer dominance and flexing. Those dudes took down an entire ecosystem without even batting an eyelid. Sure, they missed their target, but it's the statement that counts. Imagine being a wild animal strolling around in the jungle, then all of a sudden, there's a gigantic outburst of live ammunition coming your way. Also, I loved how everyone joined in after Mac went berserk. They didn't even question what they were doing or consider what they were shooting at. Now that's true friendship. What happened? I saw it. You saw what? I saw it. Well, I did mention this series before, so it was kind of obvious that it would show up in my top 10. The world might have tragically lost Dumbledore, but at least we still have Gandalf. He totally elevated the OG trilogy and ended up giving us some of the most iconic scenes in all of film history. He totally deserves a seat in the list of GOAT dialogue phrases, because YOU SHALL NOT PASS has got to be the most memorable phrase for kids growing up in that era. It's badass enough to be brave and stand up to a beast like the Balrog, but to blatantly deny entry is a whole other level of Giga Chad behavior. Let's be real here, Sir Ian McKellen deserved a freaking Oscar for his role. Man, if only Tolkien was alive to see how well Peter Jackson had honored his legacy.
Sylvester Stallone is a really special actor. Bro has two legacy roles and they both start with the letter R. For this entry, I'm considering the Rambo sequel and its massive shootout scene at the base. It's a pretty badass thing to carry that much ammunition on you and a whole other thing to actually wreak havoc. Our man spared nobody at all and blasted every single thing he could find in his path. I love how Rambo looks so different from his fellow soldiers. He's like a, a wily barbarian warrior amongst a bunch of short-haired grunts. Also, I think it's safe to say that he can never lose a fight as long as his shirt is off. The movie did an excellent job of showing us the essence of rage and watching Rambo go ham at the base was the perfect example of this. South Korea has really made rapid strides in the world of cinema, especially in recent years. Of course, Bong Joon-ho wowed the world with his Oscar-winning Parasite, but there are many other directors who are at the same level. One of them is Park Chan-wook, who's best known for his 2003 classic, Old Boy. Apart from all the disturbing themes on display, the action was top-notch and it's best showcased in the corridor fight scene. It's an exemplary scene which gives us a very realistic depiction of such a situation. Our man Odesu takes quite a few hits and his movements aren't exactly the smoothest in the world, but that's the whole point, isn't it? You can only understand the true brutality of a gang fight when you see it unfold as it would in real life. Eastwood sure has a thing for westerns, and it shows. I already covered Pale Rider from earlier, so now it's time to look at another classic, High Plains Drifter. What really stood out to me was the sequence where Clint first gets his shave and then engages in a shootout. After all the drama and lethal execution, that poor barber really deserved a giant tip if you ask me. Sergio Leone's film really breathed fresh and creative energy into the western genre, and Clint took that influence to make badass movies of his own. It portrayed the west as a terrifying and brutal wasteland where only the smart artist and the toughest survive. Just a bit more compelling than the average John Wayne film if you catch my drift. What did you say your name was again? I didn't. No, I guess you didn't at that, did you? It's hard to believe that this film came out 23 years ago. It truly is a timeless masterpiece. As far as this epic encounter goes, it's got all the necessary traits of a final boss fight. The apparently undefeatable gladiator finally got to see the flip side of the coin when Maximus dealt damage with maximum effect. The man even killed a freaking tiger in the middle of the fight as if he was swatting a fly away. Bro tells his parents it's time for bed. On a more serious note, I loved his little tactics that eventually accumulated into his victory, which finally humbled a pubescent whacking phoenix. The most badass aspect of the fight, though, was Maximus showing his opponent mercy, even after earning the right to end his life. <laughs>
when a chase scene in 1991 is still better than 90% of movie effects today, that's when you know that you're onto a winner. What James Cameron managed to pull off over here is something that most Hollywood directors would only dream of accomplishing today. This is why I always keep going back to the classics. They never disappoint. Also, I know that Arnold totally kills it as the Terminator, but can we spare a moment for Robert Patrick here? He was the perfect villain for this film, and his stable expressions really sold the lifelessness of his character. Of course, there's also a whole bunch of awesome moments like when the Terminator finds the shotgun with just one arm while he's on the bike. Let's see those TikTok kids pull off something like that in their video. Videos. Actually, you know what, on second thoughts, let's not. Ah yes, Denzel Washington is back, and that too at number two. The Book of Eli is to many people a misunderstood film, but it's gained a cult following and I can be happy with that. The most iconic moment was when we saw Eli shadow fighting against that weird gang. Of course, it's still his body in play, but the cinematography gave it a very surreal vibe. What I loved about the subtle hints in this movie was that Eli never directly attacks anyone first, his enemies always make the first move. So even if God is guiding him, he's not explicitly telling him to kill, but just giving him the strength and the abilities to protect himself. That's what you call an alpha male. All right, we want to do it the hard way. Why'd you do that? He just cut my hand off! <laughs> what are you standing around for? Get down! After all the iconic actors and films that I've covered today, it's Arnie who takes top honors with his role as John Matrix in Commando. The rampage scene is as deadly as it gets when it comes to those typical one-man army scenes. Bro even blew up a freaking jeep with that bazooka cannon of his. Whether he was shooting from his hips or nailing each and every shot, this sequence was a great blend of fun and action, especially for folks who love the 80s trends. What's hilarious is that there's no way for John to know which facility Jenny's actually being held in, but he still chooses violence. Now that's how you execute an action scene. Hope you liked the video, please subscribe to the TV region and here's another video that I know you're going to enjoy.